Hey, hello friends and welcome to Retro Portal Studio. This video is more of an announcement video for our new tool that I've created to help you with custom paint in Flutter. In one of my previous videos, when I taught you to create a custom shaped bottom navigation bar, it was a fairly complex shape. And one thing that I realized from all the reviews for that video was that most of the times it is hard to detect reference points for a particular shape. Well, this motivated me to create something that could ease out the process of creating a custom paint shape, which brings us to today. So in this video, I'm announcing a tool called Flutter Shape Maker, which targets at reducing the complexity of creating custom shapes in Flutter using custom paint by a huge margin. So let's take a look at it. Before taking a look at the Flutter Shape Maker, let's take a look at this example diagram I had for one of my previous videos, where I teach you to create a custom shaped bottom navigation bar. Although this is a relatively easy shape, the process of detecting points for this is quite time consuming. And this is why I had to plot them beforehand to make this process easy for you. In this example, we had to create a custom paint using all these points. And the custom paint looked something like this. So in the custom paint, we had to plot each of the point on the path using quadratic bezier curve, arc to point, line to, and other functions. Okay, so what if I told you that you do not have to do this by yourself anymore? So let's take a look at the Flutter Shape Maker on which you can draw the shape and it will generate the custom painter code for you. So this is your first look at the version 1 of the Flutter Shape Maker. You can see that the Shape Maker gives us with a canvas on which we can draw the points. And once all the points are drawn, we can close the shape. What you can also do is you can select a point and then click on this handle button and it will give the handles to this point. And you can use these handles to manipulate the curves of this point. Once the shape is made, you can click on this Get Code button and this will present you with the custom painter code that you can copy to your application. In this example, we'll create the bottom navigation bar from scratch. But first, let's take a look at each of the options given by Flutter Shape Maker. You can take a look at this Shape Maker at flutter-shapemaker.web.app. This link is also in the description of this video. So the very first thing that you need to take a look at when you open the Flutter Shape Maker is this config option. When you click on this, you're presented with a dialog. In this, you need to put in the width and height of the canvas. One thing you need to consider is you need to put in the width and height to maintain a particular aspect ratio. For example, if I had to create that bottom navigation bar, I will start off with a width of 800 and a height of 200. And at this point, if I save this, you can see that the shape of the canvas changes. And you can also check the dimensions at this bottom left corner of the window. The reason why I chose these dimensions is because I need to maintain the aspect ratio of the bottom navigation bar. With the help of this, the generated code will be more responsive than otherwise. In the config option, the second option that you see is for the responsive code. If I keep this responsive code on and I save the app, when I create a shape and click on the get code button, you can see that in the code, the custom painter does not use the exact dimensions of the canvas. Instead, it takes in the width and height and creates as responsive version of the path as possible. So I don't think you'll ever need to switch to non-responsive version of the shape maker. Let's move to the second option. So at this point, if I zoom in the canvas, you can see that we have three points on the screen. Now, if I want to hide these points and take a more clear look at the shape, I can click on this hide points button and you can take a clean look at the shape. Along with the points, you can also toggle the visibility of this grid by using this button right here. And you can check if you need to manipulate the points to make the shape more precise. And this brings us to the next option to clear the canvas. Once you click on clear, it will ask you for the confirmation and you can click on confirm to clear the canvas. One thing I'd like to point out is that the first point that you plot on the canvas cannot be used as a control point. That means it cannot have the handles and hence it cannot create any curves. So it's always a good idea to use this point for a corner. So what I'll do is I'll take the point and move it to the bottom left of the canvas. The next thing that I'll do is I'll add another point and I'll focus on this point by clicking on the control key and then moving the cursor to the point. And then when I use the scroll wheel, you can see that the zoom focuses on that particular point. Now I'll move this point to the end of the first block. Once this is done, I'll zoom out of the canvas. Now in the same way, I'll add points on this canvas without any curves to create the base for the bottom navigation bar. We'll add the curves later. So I'll add one point on the fifth block, one point at the end of the sixth, and on the opposite side, and so on. 
Now, I'll click on the very first point to close the path. One thing you can notice is that the points that I've drawn on the screen are not quite precise. What I can actually do is I can click on the point, which selects the point, and then I can move the point to whatever place I want. I can also use the arrow keys for extra precision. So I'll move to each point and make the points more precise. To move to the next point, I need to pan across the canvas. For this, what I can do is I can press on the space key and then click on the left mouse button and then move down and you can see that the canvas moves along the mouse. When I reach the bottom point, I can click on it to select it and then move this to the bottom right corner. I'll zoom out of the canvas. The next thing we can focus on is creating the curves. So first, let's create curves for these side edges. I'll click on this point and move it down a bit. Now that the point is selected, in the bottom left corner, you can see that we have the option to add handles. If I click on it, you can see that we have two handles to control the curve of the point. In this case, I'll use this right handle and I'll move this to the top of this block. With this, you can see that as I adjust the handle, the curve becomes more precise. I'll do the same with the other points. I'll take this point, I'll move it down a bit. And this time, I'll add the handles using the shortcut and that is by using the edge key. I'll click on edge and you can see that the handles appear. And this time I'll take the left handle and move it to the approximate location. Now what we need to do is we need to take a look at the arc between these two points. I'll click on this point and click on edge and you can see that we have the handles here also. I'll move this handle to reset the curve and I'll take the right handle and move it down to create a smooth curve to the center. I'll do the same to the other point. I'll add the handles, reset the right handle and move the left handle down. One thing you need to take care of is you don't want these handles to go off the screen because once they go off, you cannot control them. To solve this situation, what we can do is we can select the point and move it down a bit and with this, the handles also come down. Now, I'll reset the handle and I'll move the point back. At this point, we roughly have the shape of the bottom navigation bar and the only thing we need to do is we need to adjust the points to make them more precise. I'll select the point and move it to the right using the arrow key and I also noticed that the handle of this point is not exactly on the line. So I'll take the handle and adjust it accordingly. I'll do the same for the rest of the points. Now, when we have the shape that we're happy with, we can click on this get code button and we can take the code and paste it to the application. I'll copy this code and move to the Android Studio. In the Android Studio, I have the app loaded from my previous tutorial. In this, we have the BNB Custom Painter. And with the help of this BNB Custom Painter, we're creating this bottom navigation bar. What I'll do is I'll comment this BNB Custom Painter. In place of this BNB Custom Painter, I'll paste in the painter that we copied from the Flutter Shape Maker. And by default, this is called RPS Custom Painter. Now, I'll go up to the Custom Paint. And here, instead of the BNB Custom Painter, I'll put in RPS Custom Painter. I'll save the app. And you can see that we have a blue outline for the bottom navigation bar. To change this, what we can do is we can move to the RPS Custom Painter. Instead of the painting style of stroke, we can change this to fill and we'll also change the color blue to white. If I save the app now, you can see that we have a nice bottom navigation bar. To make the shape more precise, I can spend a bit more time to create more smooth curves. But since this is an introduction video, we'll leave the bottom bar as is. So I'll move back to the shape maker. Now you have seen that just how easy it is to create shapes using the Flutter Shape Maker when you don't have to calculate the points yourself. Since we're creating shapes on our given dimensions, the final code might need some tweaking when you move it to the application. But even then, this Flutter Shape Maker reduces the complexity of creating a shape to a huge margin. Since this is the version one of this app, I expect you to use this application to create your own custom painter shapes. And do let me know what improvements can be made in this application. There are a lot more features that I have in mind and I'll try adding updates and fixes to this application every few days. If you find this useful, make sure to share this with your friends and colleagues. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter for more updates on this. So I hope you find this useful. And if you do, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and also consider supporting my work via the link in the description below. See you next time. Peace.